Hey everybody, uh, my name is Michelle. Uh, I'm Michelle H in the dojo. If you've seen that, if you see me on the dojo, um, as Eddie mentioned, I'm a business analyst at RWI Logistics, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, how we are improving supply chain logistics using geographic proximity matching. So before I dive into it, I want to give a little bit of background about RWI. Uh, we're a third-party logistics company. We're based in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Uh, and we provide brokerage, freight management, and business intelligence uh, services to our customers to help them so solve supply chain problems. So this involves getting you know, produce from the field to the, to the warehouse, um, you know, getting any groceries the, on the shelves in the stores. Um, you name it, that's, that's what we're involved in. Um, but as a third party and a non-asset based, we don't have any of our own trucks. So that means that we rely really heavily on our, uh, our network of carriers. And to understand that, we need to know uh, what our history is, and that's very useful for us. Um, so I'm gonna start with the question. If we wanted to figure out how many truckloads we've delivered in the vicinity of Fort Thomas, Kentucky, take a second to think about how you would actually solve that problem or answer that question if you had a transaction history. So a few different ways you could think about this would, the first would be first search transactions where the state is Kentucky. So that could return any, any location, such as Fort Thomas, Bowling Green, Louisville, Lexington, the entire state, which is a very broad net to be casting. If you wanted to narrow it down some more, you could say state equals Kentucky and city equals Fort Thomas. And when you get that, you'll only get transactions delivered specifically in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, not anywhere, you know, within a, nowhere else close by. It's a very narrow net to cast. Similarly, zip code would return the same result. So how do we solve this? And if you look at this as well, uh, you'd miss any of these methods that we had uh, that I just mentioned, you'd be missing probably the most obvious answer if you're from the area is Cincinnati, Ohio, which is just across the river, across the state border. Uh, but that wouldn't appear in our, uh, in any of our searches when you're searching through those criteria, um, because it's in a different city, a different state, even though they're really only located five miles apart. And now imagine that you have to do this over and over and over again. So that brings up our problem. Using categorical fields, things like states, city names, uh, to figure out the distance between two different geographic locations is time consuming and it's not really reliable. And that's something that uh, as an analyst, I've had to do over and over again and I've had to figure out a different way to, to approach this. So the way we solve this with Domo is by using a Redshift data flow and the Domo dimensions connector to create a repeatable process that compares two lists of locations and draws a mileage radius around there to match, uh, to match locations within that, that mileage radius. And so that's useful because now we're not relying on drawn boundaries, so such as state lines. So to enable, in order to do this, you need three input data sets to a redshift data flow. The first is the location list. So in my example before, this would be Fort Thomas would be in this list. Um, so this could be anything such as new customer delivery locations that you're trying to source new capacity for. So all you would need for that is the location name and a postal code. The second would be the transaction history. Uh, so this would be any of the locations that you've delivered to in the past. Again, you would need some sort of transaction number or transaction ID and a postal code. And then finally, you need the city zip report from the Domo Dimensions Connector. So this uh, is this report gives us the city, state, and postal code and coordinates for pretty much every single location in the country. So the fields you need from that are postal code, latitude, and longitude. So the first step here is to uh, take that latitude and longitude table from the Domo Dimensions Connector and aggregate it. So take the average latitude and longitude and group that by postal code. The reason we do that is because uh, there are 
oftentimes the same zip code appears multiple times in that table, and we only want one, we only want one row. The next step is to take both the locations list and the, uh, and the transaction history and join those to the, that table we made previously that's the unique list of uh, latitude and longitude by, by zip code. So in each case, we are joining the, uh, the location list and the history by zip code to that list. And then we're using the st point function to translate that, uh, the latitude and longitude into an actual point on the sphere, in other words, the globe. So you do this for both data sets, so now that you have some sort of quantitative measure to, uh, to compare against. After that, you would join those two data sets together, or those two transforms together, um, using the distance sphere function. So the distance sphere function relies on those two points uh, that we made in the previous two steps. And that returns the distance in meters between those two points uh, based on the latitude and longitude. And so if we wanted, in this case, to, I realize that's a little bit small looking at it from up here. Um, if we wanted to, in this case, figure out uh, or match all the locations that are within 100 miles of each other, all you would have to do is convert those meters to miles, and multiply by 100. And so when you join by those two, that gives us the list of every single, uh, every single transaction that fell into each of those locations or within 100 miles of each of those locations that we're searching against. So the result here, when you visualize it, is uh, each of these colors on the map represents one of the original locations that we were searching. And the dots here are all of the uh, all of the past transactions that have delivered within 100 miles of each of those. So once you have all this, you can start visualizing this, uh, the map like I'm showing up here, or you can uh, do further analysis in other data flows using this. Um, so it's, it provides a lot more flexibility and opportunity. A few notes on this. I uh, wanted to pr provide a few other use cases. So uh, some of the other things we've used this for is developing pricing based off of past transactions that are delivered in the same area. You could also identify the closest warehouse uh, to ship from. So say a customer has uh, a new customer or a new delivery location they need to uh, send product to, but they don't know which warehouse to ship it from, which is closest. This is the quickest way to do that when searching a large list. Um, and then finally, we could also find the closest load for each of our carriers to pick up from. So if a, uh, you know that there's a load delivering in Dallas, then you want to find the closest, uh, the closest location to pick up from for that driver after it's picked up. Now, a few caveats here um, that you'll need to re remove the ST point fields from the final output. Otherwise, it's not going to generate a result because the C data type is geometry and not able to be uh, viewed in Domo. Uh, similarly, the SQL previews will not work on the, in the transforms when you use the ST point and, and distance sphere functions. Um, if you run into an error when you're trying to preview it, don't panic. Just go ahead and run it if everything else looks OK. Um, and then it should give you some more information once you've completed. Um, and then the last bit is, the actual driving distance in this case may actually be larger. This is um, the closest uh, point to point list, or the closest point to point distance. Um, but other than that, it's, it's been very useful for us. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks. 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 Thanks.